Has the President of the United States cut a deal with the pharmaceutical companies that is good for them, but maybe not so good for you as a taxpayer? And will Congress challenge that deal? What is it? Well, it seems to be the type of deal that this president railed against, ironically enough, when he was campaigning. With the uh, Medicare prescription drug bill, for example, the Congress specifically exempted Medicare from being able to negotiate for the cheapest available price. And, and, and that was a profound mistake. All right, so here's what happened now. The White House needs an industry friend to help it pass health care reform. Most who follow that would say that's fair. It got in touch with pharma, which is the lobbying arm of the drug manufacturers. And by the way, the biggest donor of uh, campaign cash in all of American politics. Pharma, by the way, is run by this guy. That's Billy Towson. He's the well-connected former member of Congress who left politics for lobbying. The same Billy Towson singled out in this ad by, yes, presidential candidate Barack Obama. The pharmaceutical industry wrote into the prescription drug plan that Medicare could not negotiate with drug companies. And you know what? The chairman of the committee who pushed the law through went to work for the pharmaceutical industry making $2 million a year. Mm -hmm. Imagine, that. Imagine that. That's an example of the same old game playing in Washington. You know, I don't want to learn how to play the game better. I want to put an end to the game plan. Who was the uh, presidential candidate speaking to there? Billy Towson, the man candidate Obama was just talking about. He gets invited to the White House recently. He agrees last month to $80 billion in drug cost savings over the next 10 years. $80 billion. Sounds pretty good, right? But guess what? Congressional estimates show that savings on drugs uh, could be twice that much. And the deal Towson got precludes further cuts down the road. In other words, it's locked in. You get it? So really, you could argue that you and me as taxpayers are going to be out the other half. $80 billion, right? Because the White House needed a powerful industry ally to help it pass health care reform. Seems curious. Joining us now is CNN chief business correspondent Ali Belshi, who's been looking into this for us. Uh, he's in the CNN Express this hour, by the way. He's going all over the country, going to these meetings where Americans are discussing what's going on with health care. Ali, um, you're going to be touring the country, meeting people at all these town halls. Look, let me ask you about this thing. Putting aside for now that we're living in a completely over-medicated society when it comes to pharmaceuticals. We'll tackle that in just a moment. Why are the pharmaceuticals doing a backroom deal, or what appears to be a backroom deal, with the President of the United States? And should we as taxpayers be worried about this? You know, you, you sort of outlined it very well, Rick. The issue is this. The White House uh, wanted a few industry groups. They wanted some people on side to say that they're going to deal with two problems. One is health insurance, which we're talking about right now, and the other one is simultaneously reducing the cost of health care. And what they did was get pharma, the health care uh, industry, the, the pharmaceutical company industry, on side uh, with an agreement that they would be pressed to cut about $80 billion in health care costs. And if they were on side to do that, the White House would protect them from legislatively being forced to cut more. So basically, it was a trade-off. The pharmaceutical industry says, fine, we'll cut our costs, we'll, we'll contribute to uh, a trimming of $80 billion in cost to the health care system, and after that, uh, everybody leaves us alone. Now, well, Congress is saying, we're not bound by this. Why were there even backroom that, deals that's, done? That's my uh, point. It looks like everybody tried to make one of us. That, that, Ali, that's the point. We've been told all along that congressional yeah. Democrats, as well as Republicans, are shepherding this deal through, trying to come up something that will be good for all Americans. Uh, and now we learn that while they're doing that, and our eyes yeah. on, our, on that and the things that you're covering with all these people fighting and bickering back and forth, there's something else going on over here that nobody else is paying yeah. attention to. Shouldn't congressional Democrats, if nothing else, go to their president and say, hey, what are yeah. you doing, Mr. President? I, I, I think there's an issue with transparency here, Rick. I think the bottom line is this is such 
a not only complicated issue, but it, it really inflames passions, as we've seen from these town halls. Uh, it, I think everybody needs to know what's on the table, what's being negotiated. If there's a deal that's been made with the pharmaceutical industry, it was important, I think, for people to have all that information. And I think a lot of Americans are going to say, yes, they'd like Congress to be able to make those rules. But again, we don't know because people really are split on this issue. So should we be happy that the White House extracted $80 billion in, con in, in concessions from the pharmaceutical industry in order to get them on side so they're not fighting the White House because that's a very, very well-funded lobby? Or should we be mad that they made a deal that everybody didn't know about and could pre prevent them from getting Congress to take further action, saving double the amount of money? This is a tricky one, Rick. I, it, it's hard to know where you should stand on this. Should I be happy that we're saving $80 billion or unhappy that we're not going to be able to save $160 billion? Yeah, it's a deal with lobbyists. And, you know, it's, it, it's always tough when you look at those. But yeah. you know what they say about dealing with the devil?